Lecture 8 Chapter 25 Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, God's great power inspires awe, and God's great love governs righteousness. Before God, man is sinful and impure. The brilliance of God far surpasses that of the sun. In his eyes, man is as small as a worm. Chapter 26 Then Job replied, How do you help him who has no power? How do you save the arm that has no strength? How do you counsel him who has no wisdom? And how do you reveal the nature of things to him? Hell and destruction, all are under God's control. The earth hangs in the air, revolving around the north. Waters condense into thick clouds, swirling and drifting in the air. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, again and again. At God's wrath the heavens tremble and the earth shakes. The sea sometimes is still, sometimes rises and falls. The sky is adorned with countless stars, moving and shifting, the Milky Way is winding its way. Behold, these are but the outer fringe of his works. How little do we know about him? Who can understand the thunder of his power? His wisdom makes the proud feel ashamed. Chapter 27 Job continued his discourse. All that I experience has taken away my judgment, and the Almighty makes me feel confused. My breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. I hold fast my righteousness, and will not let it go. My heart does not reproach me, for my days on earth. Though the hypocrites have lost conscience, they are living a good life now. But when trouble comes upon them, will God hear their cries? Will they call upon God at all times? This is the punishment that the wicked and oppressors receive from the Almighty. However many their children their fate is to die young. Their offspring will not have enough to eat. Though they heap up silver like dust and pile up clothing like clay, the righteous will wear their clothing and the innocent will divide their silver. Their houses are vast and grand. When these wealthy people die, their possessions will be divided and they will not rest in peace. God will ruthlessly crush them, and terrors will overtake them like a flood, yet they have nowhere to escape. Men shall clap their hands at them, and shall hiss them out of their place. Chapter 28 Mankind is seeking a path that transcends darkness and leads to light, and contemplating the truth that transcends death and leads to eternal life. Sapphires can be found in stones, and gold can be found in gold dust. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the truth? Man does not know the value of truth. Truth is hidden in nature and cannot be found without wisdom. Wisdom is priceless. It cannot be bought with gold or silver, nor can it be compared to treasures such as pearls, agate, jade and diamonds. So, 
Where does wisdom come from? And where is truth? Current living beings have no wisdom to comprehend the truths of the universe. God understands the way to wisdom and knows the place of truth, for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. He gave to the wind its weight and apportioned the waters by measure. He made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder. In the beginning, God, with his wisdom and power, created everything, and truth was in it. Chapter 29 Job continued his discourse. If only my situation could be like the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. When I was in my prime, God treated me like a close friend in my tabernacle. At that time, the Almighty was with me, my children were all around me, and I was very wealthy. When I was among the people, young men saw me and withdrew, and the aged rose and stood. The nobles refrained from talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The officials were cautious, not daring to act rashly. Whoever heard my name called me blessed, and whoever saw me commended me, because I rescued the poor who cried for help, the fatherless, and those who had none to help them. The man who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing for joy. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor. I took up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked his prey out of his teeth. Then I proudly declared, I shall live a long and healthy life and die peacefully in my house. My children will live in health and happiness in a land of abundance. My glory will increase and my prestige will grow. My righteousness and justice were widely known and my judgments and decisions were spread far and wide. Men waited in silence for my counsel. I sat as their chief, smiling to them, helping to resolve their issues and choosing the way for them. I dwelt as a king among his troops. I was like one who comforts mourners. Job's words revealed the lofty attitude of those who consider themselves righteous and virtuous. Deep in their hearts, they are proud, but they don't realise it. They never accept criticism from others, whether it comes from good or bad intentions. In reality, a person who lacks complete faith, reverence and gratitude towards God, no matter how kind or righteous they consider themselves to be, cannot truly humble themselves. Chapter 30 But now, men younger than I mock me. Their fathers were once hired to feed my sheepdogs. Their social status is low. They live in poverty and hunger. They are homeless and are oppressed by others. And now, these people treat me as a laughingstock and a typical sinner. In my presence they throw off restraint, mocking me, ridiculing me, and even bullying me. My prosperity has passed away like a cloud. Now my heart is overwhelmed by grief, my soul is haunted by fear, and days of affliction have taken hold of me. At night the biting wind pierces my bones. In the grip of hunger and cold, 
I shiver and huddle. Like an animal trapped in the mire, I am trapped in adversity. O oh God, I cry out to you, but you do not answer. I reach out my hand, but you seem to ignore. You have turned cruel to me. With the might of your hand, you test me, making me lose direction and confidence. I know you will bring me to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Though people cry for help as they die, God does not stretch out his hand to the grave to save them. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Why do all my good deeds lead to such retribution? Job, with the emotions of an ordinary good man, was appealing to God. He couldn't understand God's work. When I looked for good, misfortune came. When I waited for light, darkness came. My skin turns black and dirty. I have become a brother of jackals and a companion of owls. I mourn without the sun. My harp is tuned to mourning and my flute to weeping. In the congregation, I reach out my hands and cry to God for help. Chapter 31 I refrain from looking at inappropriate things and harbouring inappropriate thoughts. So, what would be my portion from the Almighty on high? Is it not calamity for the unrighteous and a special punishment for those who commit iniquity. Does he not watch my ways and check my actions? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed in a just balance, so that God will know my integrity. If my steps have turned from the path, if my heart has coveted what my eyes see, and if my hands have been defiled, then may my possessions disappear, and my wife grind another man's grain. When my servant brought a complaint against me, if I have despised them and denied justice to them, what then shall I do when God judges me? When he makes inquiry, what shall I answer him? Aren't we all children of God? Aren't we brothers and sisters? The fire of greed will consume everything, depriving one's family and possessions. The majesty of God fills me with fear, for I cannot endure the calamity from him. If I have made gold my hope, or called fine gold my confidence, pondering how to make money every day, this will be an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I would have denied God. If I have rejoiced at the misfortune of those who hated me or gloated over the trouble that came to them, in fact, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by cursing their lives, if, in my tabernacle, I have refused to give alms to strangers. In fact, I have never let a stranger lodge in the street. I have always opened my doors to them. If I have covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my heart, then I would fear the crowd and dread the contempt of families. I would keep silent not daring to face others. But do I fear? Do I not dare? Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my wish is that the Almighty would answer me. In chapter 31, Job, 
on behalf of the virtuous and righteous people, presented his righteousness and kindness, honesty and integrity. He appealed to God, hoping to be judged by God. Why do the virtuous and righteous still have to experience calamities and punishments?